the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stosan Esti. Welcome, special welcome to our visitors and guests. What do the words Perrier, Evian, Dasani, Aquafina, Fiji bring to mind? They're all bottled water. When many of us were young, no one had ever heard of bottled water or even filtered water, but now it's everywhere. It supposedly improves and maintains our physical health. However, many people are beginning to question if bottled water is really that healthy for the environment, or even if filtered water is more healthy than regular tap water. No matter if it comes from a bottle, no matter if it comes from a brand name or a faucet in our home or a mountain spring, physical liquid water can only improve our, and maintain our physical health. It cannot grant us eternal life. The mythical fountain of youth is exactly that a myth. Jesus says this in today's gospel reading from the fifth Sunday of Pascha, which Deacon Ted just read, when he meets the Samaritan woman and referring to their meeting place, the well of Jacob, Jesus says, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. By inference, he refers to every well, every stream, every lake, and source of water. However, Jesus does tell us where the real fountain, the real true fountain of life is. And he says, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give will never thirst. But the water that I shall give to him or her will become a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Jesus calls this water that he gives idorzon in Greek, living water. But what exactly is the living water that quenches all thirst? In John chapter 7, we read, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him or her come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his or her heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Thus, the living water that Jesus gives is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity. Now, the Samaritan woman, and any of us would probably do the same thing, hearing about the opportunity to drink this living water that bestows eternal life, asks, where do you get that living water? Give me this water that I may not thirst. Unlike regular or filtered water in our kitchen, unlike bottled water at the convenience store, we cannot just turn on the tap we cannot just buy the living water of the Holy Spirit. Something more is required. And that something is cleansing and purification of sin, catharsis. In American society, we put a great deal of emphasis on keeping things clean. We wash everything, a lot our clothes, our dishes, our hands, our bodies. We even wash our water. It's not enough that it gets purified at a water treatment plant. It has to be filtered and purified again and again. 
our approach to life is often extremely antiseptic. And this is well and good, but to a point. Many researchers have hypothesized that the growth in food and latex allergies is due to the fact that our immune systems cannot find enough germs to fight the environment around us, so they start reacting to stimuli that were previously benign. But we must ask ourselves, do I give as much attention to the cleansing and purification of my soul from sin as I do to my body from germs? When Jesus reveals to the Samaritan woman his knowledge about her serial marriages and her current relationship outside of marriage, he is pointing out that before she can drink the living water, she must repent and change her current lifestyle. The context for understanding how and where we must change is implicit in today's gospel. It is within the context of a living and continual encounter, a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way to receive the living water of the Holy Spirit without Christ. He alone gives this water. We confess in our creed that the Holy Spirit proceeds from God the Father. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. In John chapter 15, Jesus also says, but when the Helper, meaning the Spirit, comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. The Holy Spirit is the empowering force to live the life in Christ, to become like him, to go beyond just knowing about him to knowing him personally. The Holy Spirit is the light of Christ that illuminates the darkness in our life in order to see Jesus more clearly. The Holy Spirit illuminates the path so we can follow Christ wherever he leads us. Now let us return to Jacob's well for a moment. A spring or a well is a, let's say, unique or seldom thing seen in the desert. It's typically the center of an oasis. And in the Old Testament, wells and springs were understood as places and signs of God's revelation. We still have spiritual springs in the modern day desert of our secular society. And these springs and wells, where are they? What are they? They are our churches. They are places to go to encounter Christ and drink of the living water of the Holy Spirit. Whether as a child or an adult, our new life in Christ springs out of where? The baptismal font. And to live that new life, we are also chrismated, receiving the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this personal encounter, this being united with God, can only be sustained through another fount, another fount, if you will, another fountain. And what is that? It is the chalice that holds the body and blood of Christ, which we receive with Eucharistia, with thanksgiving. The imagery cannot be more obvious or clear. We remember that our first encounter with physical water was in the womb of our mother. It was our life-giving water. 
And when we became Christians, we were immersed in the purified, spirit-filled waters of baptism. And we can continue to get, I should say, we, we can get regular water from nearly anyone or anywhere. But the living water of the Holy Spirit only comes from Christ in the life of the church. Regular water is a material substance with physical properties, but living water is a supernatural person that can inspire the soul and animate the body to holiness and good works. Regular water is a bare necessity for physical life, but has no calories and no energy. Living water is the breath of energy of the spiritual life. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, as we conclude today, we remember that Jesus also said in today's gospel, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit refers to the Holy Spirit. In truth refers to Jesus Christ. And knowing all of this, why would we go anywhere else but the church that provides us with the opportunity to personally encounter Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? It is only here that we learn how to truly worship and pray. It is only here that we learn how we learn to understand the scriptures. We learn how to fast. We learn how to give alms. There are numerous false gospels, including various philosophies, beliefs, pseudo religions, and spiritualities in our world that claim to have the living water, but they do not. Sometimes we turn to them, but they cannot quench our thirst for God. They sometimes even pervert the understanding and experience of our own faith by teaching us that we can be spiritual without being religious. Don't be fooled. These are cheap imitations in fancy brand name bottles but they, they are not the true living water of the Holy Spirit that gives eternal life. Amen. Christ is risen.